Hello, people of the internet. It is I, GareBear890, back again with another video. All right, so video games get reviewed. Sometimes they get good reviews. Sometimes they get bad reviews. Sometimes they get bad reviews, and those reviews are really not justified or accurate. Uh, and so anyways, I got a couple of games here that I felt like really got a bad rap unnecessarily, and uh, I really enjoyed them. And so I wanted to kind of stick up for them in a way. And starting off the list, we are starting strong with Days Gone. Which, unfortunately, from my understanding, quite a few reviewers got early copies that were very buggy. Uh, there was a pretty large day one patch. And uh, that must have made a huge difference. Because when I played this game, I did not encounter any game-breaking bugs. And it played beautifully, and I had an awesome time with it. Great story, awesome uh, combat, and cool game mechanics. And even when it did start to get a little stale, they introduced Horde Hunting, which just completely revitalized the game for me. So yeah, this is one that it's like, if you think this might be your type of game, give it a go. Because that's really what's important, you know, if you enjoy it. Not some game critic that's played, you know, hundreds of games because they have to. Uh, but anyways, moving on, another great example of just getting bashed by reviews, even before the game came out, uh, is The Order 1886. I remember that it was like every article that came out, it was like saying that uh, the playtime of the campaign was just shorter and shorter and shorter, and it got down to someone was saying it was only four hours long, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, yes. It is on the shorter side, but uh, graphically and cinematically, it is an amazing game. I really like the story. I enjoyed the combat, and uh, I had picked this one up day one, and I definitely did not regret it. So yeah, just another one that I highly recommend that you play for yourself. Okay, now this one created a lot of controversy back in the day, and some of it justified, most of it not, in my opinion. Uh, but The Last of Us Part Two, I think, is a masterpiece and a worthy sequel to the incredible original game. Uh, yeah, they just like took everything to the next level. And I think it was more so with the story that most people had, you know, issues with. But I, I like the story and I agree with the message that was told. And I recently played it. And yeah, it's just a phenomenal game. That I really, really enjoy. And speaking of The Last of Us, here we have The Last of Us Part 1, which was a remake of the game. And yeah, initially, I, like most people, was very confused why they were choosing to do this when we had already seen a remaster on PS4. Uh, but it's one of those instances where, do we need it? No. But it is very nice to have. Um, graphically, obviously, it looks phenomenal. And they kind of updated some of the mechanics, modernized it a little bit. They didn't have to do much. Uh, but yeah, I picked this one up and was just really glad to play through it. And uh, definitely glad that it's now kind of on the same level graphically and mechanically with the much newer sequel. Okay, and now we have Resident Evil 3 Remake. Uh, now I have played quite a bit of the Resident Evil games. I am a huge fan of the series. I love most of the games, and uh, I definitely just look for the good amongst the bad. But anyways, uh, the original Resident Evil 3 Red Nemesis was, I have to admit, a bit of a struggle for me. Um, it is a great game, but I kind of had a hard time with Nemesis showing up all the time, uh, just, you know, randomly all over the city. So it just kind of pulled me out of the game. It derailed what I was trying to do. And I get it. That's kind of like the whole point of the game is Nemesis never stops. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That just wasn't my type of gameplay for the most part. And so when they remade this and they made Nemesis's more uh, encounters more scripted, I really liked that because then I felt like it didn't kind of totally change what path I was going on or what I was doing 
and it just kept me more involved in the game. And hey, you know, that could just be more of a me thing, but anyways, a lot of people were kind of upset because they changed quite a bit. Uh, and I understand that, but at the same time, I just, I felt like this was a, a really well done, modernized version of Resident Evil 3. All right. Now up next we have Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, which overall I feel like most people agree is a good game, but it was almost like they wanted Uncharted 2 again. They want the same, but different, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I think that the reason that it does get kind of listed as a black sheep sometimes is because the jump from Uncharted 1 to 2 was huge. Uh, they were able to polish and, you know, modernize and just, like, make it an even better experience. And so I feel like from 2 to 3, you know, they didn't need to be as big of a jump. They were able to kind of just really fine-tune and uh, get things just running and looking phenomenal in this one. Uh, so for whatever reason, people have just kind of glorified 2, and then they try to tear down 3, and it's like... The trilogy is great. All three games are just incredible. And uh, this one is one of the best games I've ever played. And uh, a definitely, definitely worthy sequel. Alright, now we have Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Which I feel like overall has kind of died down. You know, the, the complaining that the last little bit unfortunately got cut due to uh, budget and time constraints. Uh, but uh, oh, this is a, a phenomenal game. Uh, I picked this one up, day of release, and had a blast. And I thought the story was crazy, crazy, but also very good. And uh, I really enjoyed the gameplay and just all the things you could do and building up Mother Base and just, it was just awesome. Uh, so much so that my college roommate at the time, who was not a gamer, started playing this. And he would help me find soldiers for Mother Base. And he got quite good at it. Okay. Up next, we have Metroid Prime Echoes. Which, again, I feel like this one's kind of died down a little bit. But initially, people were saying, oh, it's too different. It's too weird. We don't like it. And I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, I remember my brother picking this up day of release and we were both super excited and loved it. Uh, I thought it was so cool. All the different new suits, all the different areas, uh, it was quite challenging, but, uh, definitely a worthy sequel to Metroid Prime. Okay. Now this one, it's more that, uh, it's one that I really had a lot of fun with. And so I was kind of a little baffled when I found out that there are some people that don't like it. Uh, but yeah, this was the first game that I played in the Legacy of Kane series, Blood Omen 2. I think my brother just saw it in GameStop and he liked the cover and so he picked it up and then we both loved it. And uh, yeah, it is definitely you know a, a, a departure from the previous games, but... Overall, I just think it was a, a really cool and unique game that we definitely had a ton of fun with. Okay, now here's another one that uh, it's. I think people have finally gotten over it, but it took a while. And that is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I get where they're coming from. It's like we had Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And Majora's Mask, one of the darkest Legend of Zelda games. And then they're like, hey, here's this kind of happy, upbeat, you know, cel-shaded, cartoony, graphic-styled Zelda. And so, yeah, I guess there was quite a bit of backlash. I even had a personal friend that was a diehard fan that refused to play it. But luckily, my other friend played it, loved it, and was like, dude, you gotta try this out. And then I played it and loved it. And, yeah, it's just, it's a great game that got a bit of backlash. But then, years later, we got this. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. And suddenly, everybody's coming out of the woodwork saying that, oh, this is an amazing game. It has aged so well. It's just 
It's great. We loved it from day one. And it's like, dude, you are a bunch of lying scumbags. I mean, I'm glad if you've come around to it and realized its greatness, but to kind of act like that's how they've always felt, it's a little ridiculous because it's like, this is a phenomenal game that definitely has earned its spot as one of the Legend of Zelda greats. All right, now here's another kind of black sheep, Resident Evil Zero. Uh, I played Resident Evil Remake, and I loved it, and then my brother was like, well, here is some more Resident Evil. <laughs> and so I immediately played this, and I loved it. And I think, really, it's just that it was different. They were willing to try something new, having the partner system. Yeah, you have to figure out some puzzles by swapping back and forth and going different places, but it's like... Honestly, it was a, a really cool mechanic, and it worked really well, and it's kind of surprising for the time. Uh, but yeah, we got some really cool backstory, and uh, just a great game overall. Okay, now here, this is kind of the opposite. <laughs> this is one that I did pick up close to day one on the Xbox 360. And I played it, and I loved it, and I thought it was so cool. And I really did not understand the backlash. So much so that any time it kind of came up online, I would defend it. And uh, just really didn't understand where they were coming from. And then it went on the shelf for you know a long time. So finally, just this past year, my brother and I were like, hey, we should play Resident Evil 5 and then 6. And so we did that. And... I started to see the cracks in the mirror. Um, it definitely has its cool moments. It's awesome boss fights. And, you know, hey, it's Resident Evil. It's over the top. But uh, even by Resident Evil standards, this is a little too over the top in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it's like you can't hold a game that was made in 2012 to, you know, 2024 standards. But at the same time, I, I get it. It, it was kind of rough to play through some parts, for sure. Uh, but I'm still glad we have it. So it's like, you know, even if a game has its flaws and it's not the best, at least we have it, and uh, we can try to appreciate the good. So, yeah, that's kind of my short list. You know, some of my favorite games I feel like get a bad rap altogether or just for, you know, minor things here or there. Let me know, what are some of your favorite games that, for whatever reason, get unnecessary backlash or hate? Uh, but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and as always, have a good one.